So now that we've talked about what arbitrary methods are, arbitrarity methods are, now that we've talked about designing the futures collector, let's go look at its implementation. And we're going to show how to do all this stuff, and we'll look at the code here in just a second. So the first thing to note, futures collector implements collector. So it's basically a custom collector. And you can see it's parameterized by type T, so we can make this wrapper class a reusable class that could be used for all kinds of things, not just the example we're using it for in this, this uh, case study. The first parameter, recall, denotes the type of input elements in the stream, which is a stream of completable futures to type T. It's a generic. The mutable result container type is a list of completable futures to type T. That's what gets stored internally as it's collecting and accumulating the results. And then finally, we have the result type that's returned from the finisher, which is a completable future to a list of T. So we get back a single completable future that will trigger when all the other completable futures that we've been accumulating finish running. The supplier is really simple. It just does what most suppliers do. It makes a new array list, which is going to be used to store the results. That's our mutable result container type, array list. And you can see that we give back the array list constructor reference, which is what a supplier handles. So it's going to generate a list of completable futures to T. <clears throat> and that's the mutable result container. The accumulator method, super easy, super simple. This is assuming it's only ever going to be called in a single thread, so it's a non-concurrent collector, which is fine. We don't have to use parallel streams, but if we were to, which would be overkill, it would still work correctly. And what we're going to do here is pass in the method reference for list add, which in fact is a by consumer that's going to go ahead and take a completable future from the stream and add it to the mutable result container, which is a list of completable futures to T. The combiner operation, which would only be used if we were using parallel streams, not if we're using a single thread. And even if we use a parallel stream, we don't have to worry about locks. This thing all runs correctly and, and cleverly using the Java streams framework to handle any synchronization that's required. And basically what it does is it takes two mutable result containers or array lists and it merges them together so that the second one goes at the end of the first one. So it combines them. We don't actually use that in our example, but we need to put it in because that's what Java expects. Now, the fourth method, and the most interesting method by far, is the finisher. And this is the method that returns a function that the Java Streams framework collector mechanism uses to transform the array list, which is the mutable result container that's accumulating the elements in the stream, into a single completable future. So that's what this is doing at a high level. Now let's take a look at how it works. It's really interesting. So first of all, there's this thing called futures. And futures is just the name that we're using here to represent the mutable result container that the futures collector is using to accumulate the results. So we say futures, and then we've got a little lambda expression. And what it's going to do is it's going to use the all of arbitrary arity method to take the futures list, convert it to an array of the appropriate type. And this somewhat awkward and unwieldy looking syntax is just what you have to do in Java to handle converting a list to an array. I wish that they would come up with a way to make all of just take a list that would make life much easier, but oh well, this is what we have to work with. So this is the way you do it. It's also another reason why you want to hide all this accidental complexity behind a nice wrapper interface. What all of returns, recall, is a completable future that will be triggered when all the other completable futures we passed in as an array are all complete. So they're all off running, doing their thing asynchronously. We get back a single completable future. And when that completable future completes, we chain it together with another completion stage method called then apply. And what then apply does is it gets called back when everything else is done. And then this action, this dependent action, is what it registers with the, the uh, well, it registers it with the, the, the completable future framework. And when that apply gets called, this will be invoked synchronously in the thread, typically the thread that finished up doing the last computation asynchronously. And you can see what we do here is we take the list of futures, which is the mutable result container, 
turn it into a stream. So we have a stream of completable futures, all of which are now complete because we wouldn't have gotten here unless they were all done. We use the map intermediate operation to join all of those completable futures so that things that were completable future to T are now T. So we have a, basically a stream of objects at this point, and we convert those objects into a list. So now we have a list of objects, not completable futures, but objects, because we've joined them all. And the then apply method will return a completable future to a list of objects of type T. So super cool, very, very powerful. It eliminates you, the programmer, from having to write all this gobbledygook. You just put it into an abstraction, and now we can use it with Java streams, which is very nice. We have a characteristics cap uh, method, which is going to return a set that indicates the characteristics. In this particular case, you can see we're just going to have a singleton with saying, if this is unordered, we don't care about the order. It's also a non-concurrent collector, so we don't say it's concurrent. That would cause all kinds of headaches for reasons I don't want to go into, but you can imagine what they might be. And then finally, the to future factor method makes a new futures collector, and that's what we used when we made the call back over here. So we said futures collector to future, that returns to us that futures collector, collect uses that, and then will give us back a single method. And then, and here's the cool part, after we finally get that completable future triggered and everything's converted into a completable future to a single type T, or a list of type T, then we have yet another completion stage method, this time then accept, which is going to be called back after everything else is done, and that's going to go ahead and sort and print the list. And if you remember the way that that worked, it was also very clever because it did the sorting in parallel with heap sort and quick sort at the same time and picked whichever one finished first and then printed the results out. So that's how we do this. I really like these abstractions. They make everything so much easier to, to reason about, and it allows us to use Java streams in order to manage the control flow in a nice linearized and coherent way. There's no if statements, there's no loops, there's no switch statements. It's just nice and clean. So I think it makes the code easier to understand. And it also tends to make asynchronous code look a lot like synchronous code. This looks pretty synchronous, even though there's lots of asynchrony happening underneath the, the hood, and the use of the collector helps to simplify things as well. So now you're in a much better position to not only understand how this example works, but when you're looking at using the, the futures collector, I think I call it futures collector int stream or something like that in assignment four, you'll know what that's doing under the hood as well, because it's going to take all the different traversals and crawls and counts and so on, and it'll all run them concurrently, and then you'll end up with a single completable future that triggers when everything is done running asynchronously.